Blanche Gomez. I'm the daughter of our dearest Alice Miranda Gomez. I'm the sixth child among her nine children. And to everyone gathered here today, family, friends, thank you for coming on behalf of the Gomez family. Thank you for joining me today as I try to navigate the impossible task of summing up, summing up the life of someone incredible in only a few minutes. Losing a loved one, especially a parent, is not easy. No matter how much you prepare yourself for it, one is never ready. When we lost our father 17 years ago, it was tough. I remember writing my eulogy for Papa. I didn't know where and how to begin. Tears were flowing down my face, blurring every word that I was writing. It was the very first time we experienced death in our immediate family. Though tough, the thought that we still had Mama around somehow slowly eased the pain and sorrow of losing Papa. Today, we lay Mama to eternal rest. Mama Alice joins Papa Mac and the many other loved ones who went before us. It seems to me like a harder pill to swallow. The thought of not having both of our parents around makes it even tougher. So how do I cover 90 years of my dearest mother's life in four minutes? Let me put her, in, let me put her life into perspective. She was active in the community before she retired and moved here in the U.S. Mama was the very essence of compassion and of duty. She had dedicated her life in support of Papa's political career. She served her community well as the First Lady of Santo Tomas, as Father Charlie has mentioned earlier. And when Papa retired as Mayor of Santo Tomas, she continued her service to the people. This time, she stood on her own merit, not as the mayor's wife, but she served as regional manager for the Department of Human Settlements for the whole Region 3. And she was a member of the Board of Directors for the Philippine National Red Cross. Mama Alice will also always be remembered for her style and her beauty. She has that grace, that glamour and elegance that she exudes naturally. Someone with a particular brand of sophistication and natural nobility. Within our family, she earned the title, our Queen Mother. As far as the family is concerned, this quote would best describe her. A mother is she who can take the place of all others, but whose place no one else can take. Let the words of Cardinal Gaspar Mermilod sink in for a while. A mother is she who can take the place of all others, but whose place no one else can take. That is Mama Alice. My mother is the glue that holds the family together. We are who we are because of her. We are strong women and men because of her. Our matriarch started a legacy focused on family. She loves to gather all of us. She would always find an excuse to celebrate someone, whether it is a birthday, a graduation, relatives from out of town visiting, any excuse to get us all together. She would cook up a feast, making sure there's more than enough food to go around and then some more to go. Her thoughts were always focused on family. Same thoughts and values that she always preached to us. Love one another, be kind and understanding, respect each other's differences and opinions. We are family. These values we will endeavor to uphold, to honor her, and pass on her legacy to our children and hopefully to the next generations to come.
She was surely the pillar of our family, a pillar of our community. She would take each and every opportunity available to her to make those around her feel supported and seen. What's been most clear to me during this difficult time is simply the staggering amount of people whose lives Mama Alice touched. Family, friends and strangers alike, she cared for and loved. So many folks, even though she has not seen in over a decade, have written in and let us know the impact she had on their lives. To say she made she made you feel loved, seen, and appreciated is an understatement. In the past weeks before she passed away, a number of us in the family celebrated our birthdays. Days after she passed away, my sister Mary Lou found birthday envelopes with cash ready for her to give to us birthday celebrants. She wasn't able to give them themselves. She also had a handwritten note with our names on it, asking God to bless us with good health for those of us who had medical issues. That selfless act of thoughtfulness pulled my heartstrings, for she was more concerned about us than her own struggles to breathe due to her terminal ailment. I admire her faith her faith in God gave her the strength and a strong will to leave. After we met with a palliative care team of doctors six months ago and discussed end-of-life management, I honestly thought she would be saddened by the news of her illness and prognosis. She threw me off when, soon after the doctors left the room, she looked at us straight in the eye and said, Fight! throwing her clenched fist in the air. I was dumbfounded in awe and admiration for this woman who was my mother. She reminded me again to never give up. Fight till your last breath. She was truly grounded in faith and a vision beyond all her accomplishments in the community and her family. It is the heavenly perspective that grounded and enriched her work here in this world. Only by consistently and continually looking on to Jesus did her accomplishments here and now not just make sense, but also strengthen her resolve and character. Every day at three o'clock, both in the morning and afternoon, she would stop to pray to the Divine Mercy because she believes that her prayers are most heard at three o'clock at the hour of death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mama has lived a full life. In her 90 years of life, there are many things for which Mama will be fondly remembered. Former First Lady of Santo Tomas, former government executive, a humanitarian, a socialite, a hometown beauty queen when she was young, an athlete. She was a loving sister, an aunt, a grandmother, but most of all, our mother. My sister Marie reminded me of a Facebook post that I wrote in 2013 for Mother's Day. It was true then, as it is still true now. And I wrote, life has its, has its strange ways of teaching us lessons. As I got older and became a mother myself, I came to terms and understood what it takes to be one like her, firm yet gentle, stern yet compassionate, tough yet forgiving, loving, giving, sacrificing. Thank you, Mama, for always being there for us, for all of us, for your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Thank you for your generous spirit and your unconditional love. We are all choked up with sadness and grief, but at the same time, we give thanks for the life of this woman I am so proud to call our mother. 
Rest in peace. We love you, Mama, and thank you for everything. When someone passes away, we naturally recall the person's life. We go as far back as we can remember. So my recollections of Mamsi back in the late 60s and 70s is that she was always active and busy. Everyone here knows that she has always been a great cook. When we were little kids, I actually looked forward to her spaghetti. And even here in the U.S., we still depended on her culinary skills, well, among many other things. Then in the 70s and 80s, she also navigated with political cunning the life of a mayor's wife, both in times of victory and also in times of defeat. I recall the campaign and meeting the advance of Popsy's first term. I also recall being with Mansi while the votes were being counted in the mid-80s. I remember even that there was a brownout. On election night, while the ballots were being counted, and Mamsi asked us to be vigilant and to pray the rosary. During that election, it was initially a win. I think all of you can remember that. But those in higher power maneuvered it into a loss. And honestly, I'm surprised by myself. I haven't actually asked any of you if that was the reason why you all ended up here during the 80s. Lastly, of course, Mamsi will always be remembered for her glamour and grace. It is no wonder that many compared her beauty and charm with that of Imelda. But honestly, after what happened to the political life of Popsi in the mid-80s, I'm not sure how Mamsi really felt when she was always compared to the former first lady. Well, now that she's gone, I am 100% sure that we all miss her for all the good things she has done for us and has shared with us. Despite maybe all the petty peeves some of you may have experienced with her. And I think it's because looking at her whole life, she has given more than what she has received for herself. So if we could only count all the love and favors she has shared with each and every one of us, can we honestly also say that we have repaid her that much? When my brother and sisters all left Pampanga, Mamsi and Beng would always welcome me to stay in your old home, even when you were all here, I think, because the house was empty back then. Now I feel sad that I wasn't able to see her again, especially during these last few years of her life. I last saw her after my mom's funeral in 2018, and even back then she was still active and helping us out. Now perhaps now is a good time to still be able to give something back to her, even when she's gone. Despite the sadness and grief we feel, and despite the natural urge to make her stay, if only possible, I think we should try to look at her passing away from her own perspective and from God's perspective. And in this, our faith can teach us three things. First, Mamsi is going to a much better place. Second, Mamsi is in a much better condition. And third, Mamsi is in very, very good company. So once Jesus told his disciples, our gospel, that in his father's house, there are many dwelling places. Of course, we should not think of the Father's house or heaven as some physically limited place with separate rooms or dwellings. 
because figuratively and spiritually, many dwelling places simply mean more than enough heavenly space for as many as God will allow to enter eternal life. In other gospel stories, Jesus also describes this place as a banquet. So it must be a festive place where people mingle and enjoy each other's company. What this means is that heaven is not some cold, serious, and gloomy place, but a very happy place where we all would want to spend our forever. So now, imagine Mamsi being in that wonderful place. Secondly, we know that Mamsi is also in a much better condition. Mamsi was not in the best of health during these past recent years. Old age and sickness is not without pain and suffering. But now, imagine Mamsi with no more health problems, no more health worries, no more sickness, no more suffering and pain. She experiences only well-being, peace, and happiness. And these are also forever, for all eternity. Now, should we not allow her to have that? Finally, Mamsi is also in very good company. Imagine Mamsi being with the angels and the saints and all those who have gone before us. I'm sure Popsi will find new funny ways to make Mamsi laugh and be happy there in heaven. And most importantly, Mamsi is also with our Good Shepherd. She is in the very real presence of God. But for us who are left behind, it is still normal to be sad. It is normal to cry. But we can also try to give Mamsi her deserved rest. Perhaps that's our gift to her. A gift that's for her own good, no longer just for our good. For now, we must bid farewell, and we know that this goodbye is not permanent. Where she's going, one day we will also get there. A lifetime of a 50 or 90 or 100 years are less than a blink of an eye when compared to eternity. We can weather the wind. Kaya natin ito. Adieu tayini. So now we pray for Mamsi. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and the, all the souls of our faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. For whom should I tremble with fear? Choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord inform you in his mercy. May you find For his prayer, please say, Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. 
Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon her. With your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister in the sure and certain hope that together with all of God in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing which you bestowed upon Alicia in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank you all of you for being here with the family at the service for your mother and grandmother. Uh, I want to thank Father Dennis, who has been very helpful in, in planning the liturgy. Uh, she is the, he's the associate pastor here at St. Dennis, and Father Charlie, who came all the way from the Philippines, um, relative of the family. And my name is Father Odell. I was so fortunate to be able to minister to her uh, when she would come to my parish to attend Mass and when I went to the hospital to anoint her. So this is probably the best gift you have given to your mother, this tribute, this Mass. Every time you come to Mass, please remember her because she will always be there with you in your prayers. And to all of you children and grandchildren, your mother indeed uh, shared with us a wonderful life, a life of service, of compassion, of unconditional love for everyone. So please continue that legacy of faith and service to our fellow men and women. That's the best you could do to memorialize your mother. In your own life, wherever you are, please remember the goodness she shared with us. In peace, let us take leave of our sister to her place of rest.
Guess I'll have to try. It's not easy to say goodbye. For all the joy we share, all the time we had to spend. If I had one wish, I want forever back again to look into your eyes and hold you when you cry. It's not easy to say. Goodbye. I remember all those great times we had, those memories, some good, some bad. Yes, and through it all, those memories will last 